Hi, this is Dr. Jill Autry and we're at SECO. I'm an optometrist and a pharmacist. I practice in Houston, Texas in a large co-management referral center. So lots of ophthalmologists and lots of optometrists uh, working together really to take care of patients of the optometrists that are out in our community and they send in patients for secondary and tertiary care. So today I did a topic uh, called flashes and floaters and curtains. Oh my! Kind of a fun little thing and looking at the different topics, uh, different ocular disease states, symptomatology that can give you flashes, floaters, and sort of that curtain or segmental loss of vision. So really wanted to look at it also in a referral based sort of thought process. So as an optometrist, you can think when a patient comes in, has flashes, well, almost all, we always think if floaters and a curtain of vision, we automatically are taught to think retinal detachment. But there's so many other things that can really fall into those different categories of symptoms. So flashes could also be migraines. Um, it could also be other retinal issues. You can have inflammatory or um, events such as ischemic situations that can give you flashes as well. So um, in the flashes department it's really listening to the patient, also looking at the demographics of the patient. How old is the patient? Is the patient a young woman? Maybe more likely to be migranous in those flashes. Um, is the patient an older patient? Have they also had a new onset of a large floater? Then of course we're thinking of vitreous detachment, acute vitreous detachment in that situation. And so really going in and looking to see now that you have that history and the demographics of the patient, what really do we have when we look in the eye? So you're wanting to really take that information and then decide once you find what you, you know, think you're looking at, or if you actually find a tear or you find some white spots on the retina or you find actually some issue of a, a vascular occlusion, then now what do I do with that patient? How do I refer that patient? How quickly should I refer that patient? On the floater side, very similar. When did the floaters occur? How old is the patient? Um, what other systemic diseases does the patient have? Are they diabetic? Are they hypertensive? Um, are they a young black male? Could they have some sickle cell anemia, which can cause vitreous hemorrhages as well? So taking all that in account, taking a good look at the eye, looking in the vitreous, making sure whether you have you know, pigment, red blood cells, white blood cells, and really what does that tell you as you go further into the back of the eye, seeing what you're looking for. Again, the demographics can really guide you as to what you should expect with a patient. Once you see what you've got, or what you think you have, then you can refer that appropriately if necessary. On the curtain side of things, again, always thinking if you've got the flashes and the floaters and a patient who is of the right age for vitreous detachment, you may actually have a retinal detachment on your hand. But also don't forget about things that can also cause sort of segmental vision loss, vascular occlusions, CVA, so a stroke can actually cause that as well. So you really want to make sure, go ahead and do that visual field if it doesn't give you, at least when you look in the slit lamp or with your BIO, it doesn't give you that, you know, right off the bat diagnosis. Don't forget that visual field because that can often guide you as well.